Well, hello, my friends, and happy Sunday, and welcome to this week's episode of My Journey with Jesus. My name is Dave Little, and I am so pleased that you all have tuned in to this week's episode as we talk about the uh, Word of God and the things that I have learned in my journey in walking imperfectly with Him and reading His Word, and as we go through this life, muddling through our spiritual walk together. And so thank you all for tuning in this week. Uh, We have been on a journey through Psalm 119. And today our journey brings us to the 18th stanza, comprising verses 137 to 144. Uh, And over the course of the uh, chapter, we have seen the psalmist go through a wide range of emotions. Uh, He has experienced affliction and and persecution, uh, guilt and redemption, and finally in the past couple weeks has come to find joy and protection in the Word of God. And today, the psalmist is going to look forward to two truths and reflect upon two truths which are everlasting. Looking forward, God's righteousness is everlasting. And our need for God's word is everlasting. So as we get into today's stanza, uh, today's stanza features a series of declarations about the word of God and his righteousness. Beginning in verse 137, we read, Righteous are you, O Lord, and upright are your judgments. Your testimonies, which you have commanded, are righteous and very faithful. And in verse 140, we read, Your word is very pure, therefore your servant loves it. God's word is upright. His word is faithful and pure. This has been the experience of the psalmist in his meditations, and it is just as true for us today. And God's word brings us truths that are eternal and everlasting. As we read on today, your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your law is truth. The righteousness of your testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding, and I shall live. So yeah, God's righteousness is everlasting and eternal. The Lord brought hope to the psalmist in the midst of his affliction and his anguish. And we have seen through the application of Psalm 119 to our own lives that God's truth and God's righteousness is living and active even in our lives today. And we definitely need it because as we live and we walk and we exist in the modern world. The modern world remains a dark and fallen place in many ways, as the psalmist also reflects through today's stanza. My zeal has consumed me because my enemies have forgotten your words. Trouble and anguish have overtaken me, yet your commandments are my delight. I am small and despised, yet I do not forget your precepts. So, after all that he's been through, the psalmist has found peace with God, and the psalmist has found encouragement through the word of God. But the problem of evil remains. What we've seen over the past few weeks in the psalmist is a transformation in his attitude toward the problem of evil. At first, he was in a state of anguish and affliction. He might even say self-pity. And this transitioned to anger. And as I mentioned a couple weeks ago, I went through a a state for a week or two of anger at uh, sin a few weeks ago myself. And it was a hard hard time to, to come to grips with my anger over a number of things, particularly in my own life and also in the world around me. It is certainly healthy for us to be vigilant and even angry about our own sins. But as we look at the outside world, 
we see that the attitude of the psalmist has changed from anger at the world to compassion as the psalmist weeps over the condition of the world. And we see that again in verse 139, this, this sense of anguish that my enemies have forgotten your words. It's not what they've done to me. It's the attitude of my enemies towards your words that is my source of grief. The psalmist has such a deep love for God's word that this passion has overcome his own self-interest, his own self-pity, and his own anger. The psalmist has been consumed by zeal for the word of God. His heart clings to God's word through the trouble and the anguish, the inquisition, and the derision that he has experienced. And the psalmist grieves that the beloved word of God has been forgotten by this fallen world. So, in the middle of all this, where does the psalmist turn? He turns in his attempts to sustain, sustain himself through these experience, experiences. He puts his focus back on remembering God's precepts and delighting in God's commandments. Our need for the word is everlasting. Whether we have walked with God for five minutes or five months or 50 years, our need to examine the Bible and apply it to our lives is a daily requirement for walking with God. It's not like we're ever going to reach the state of perfect spiritual maturity that will never require any more study of the Word. We'll never get to be so experienced and so skilled and, and so perfect at the Christian life that we don't need to pray anymore. Even the Apostle Paul, the most learned religious scholar and the most committed servant in the entire Bible, even he never reached this state of completion in his journey. Let's read what Paul says in Philippians 3. Not that I have already attained, or I am already perfected. And remember, this is from the, from the smartest and most committed guy in the faith. I haven't already attained it. I haven't already been perfected. I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Even the greatest Christian in the history of Christians recognized his ongoing and his everlasting need for God's Word. Uh, this past Sunday our pastor gave a great illustration of this idea. If you want a white wooden fence around your yard, you don't just paint the fence once. You paint the fence and the wind and the weather and the aging of the wood take their toll and pretty soon you have to paint the fence again, and you have to keep painting that fence forever in order to keep it white. The same is true of our spiritual lives. God's word is everlasting, and that's a good thing, because as we walk through this fallen world, our need for God's word is also everlasting. We get beaten down by the weather. We get beaten down by the world. We get beaten down by our own aging and our own self-inflicted wounds. And we need to continue maintaining the health of our spiritual walk by embracing the Word of God. And that's the challenge for all of us this week. We need to embrace the Word of God and, and bring it into our lives on a regular basis. So the challenge for this week, how can we embrace the idea that God's word is the most important priority in our lives? How can we structure our lives to commit our time to studying God's word and reflecting on God's word through prayer on a daily basis? That's my encouragement to you all this week as our episode today comes to a close. Yeah, so with that, thank you all for, uh, for tuning in this week. And thank you for uh, 
your comments and your support from week to week. It is a blessing to me to be able to do these videos. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a professional speaker. I'm just a guy who walks imperfectly with Jesus and struggles to, uh, to do the right thing and to, and to be a godly person from day to day. And God has laid it on my heart to use my YouTube channel to talk about what I have learned each week in the journey. So if you enjoyed this video, please uh, consider leaving a question or a comment in the questions section down below. It's uh, encouraging me to me to know that people are uh, tuning in and uh, benefiting from these videos as we muddle through the Christian life together. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. And when you give this video a like, you will promote this video in the YouTube search algorithms of other users who might be looking for inspirational content from week to week. If you want to hear more from the channel, you can hit the subscribe key down below and you'll get notified whenever new content is posted to the channel. So once again, thank you all for tuning in this week. Uh, the good Lord willing, we'll be back next week with another episode of My Journey with Jesus as we continue our journey through Psalm 119 and all of the blessings that it has in store for us. So until then, God bless you all and go in peace.